Today we talk about Zwift. Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony. Today's video is prompted by just the number of questions I've gotten on the live sessions about what is Zwift? What do I think about Zwift? I get that often. So going forward, anybody else that asks about it, I will just put the link of this video in there. Uh, that's the reason I decided to do it. Uh, the second reason I decided to do it is because um, I wanted to give Zwift a fair shake and let you guys, let those of you who heard my responses on the live feed understand where I'm coming from and how I am. Now, I did a lot of research. I, I know what Zwift is. I know about it. I know how to set it up, all that kind of stuff, because I keep up with everything cycling. You know, cycling is a major part of my life. There is a guy named Shane Miller has a channel on YouTube and uh, he has like Zwift on a budget, different ways you can set it up. What I decided to do in this video is start from the premise of defining what is Zwift, telling you about it and then wrapping it up by letting you know what I think about it. And I will cover everything for the people who ask in the future. So after looking at a lot of stuff online, I decided to go with road.cc's article because I think they gave Zwift a fair shake. Let's talk about Zwift. So the first thing they're talking about is how you get started with Zwift, which is important. And I like what he did. He said, uh, I'm writing in Richmond, Virginia. I'm going to paraphrase. I gave them credit already, so I don't want to. Just read verbatim what they have in there. He said, I'm riding in Richmond, Virginia in the, road, the World Road Championship course. I'm digging in deep, not trying to let Italian Brambilia or Brandt of the USA get away. We hit an uphill section. My speed dropped, but I'm determined to stick with these guys. And he said, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I've never actually been to Richmond. Still less the world champs. In fact, I'm just sitting here in my road.cc office riding a turbo trainer harder than ever before. This is Zwift. And he says, it's a lot of fun. And the point is, it's a virtual world. OK. You, you're riding against it's an app. It's an application. You're riding against um, avatars from other riders. You're not actually interacting directly with anybody. And yes, it's kind of a form of entertainment while you ride your bike. So he says Zwift is the first company to use massive multiplayer gaming technology. So it's almost like a gaming app to bring the outdoor uh, experience indoors. He said only you can leave the bad weather and dark conditions outside. He said, what, what equipment do I need? Basically, you're riding against other riders that have Zwift. They connect to the Zwift server and you pay a fee for this service, for this entertainment. It's kind of like having a subscription to a movie theater where you can go anytime and watch a movie if that's what you're into. And so he says, what equipment do you need? You need to have equipment that will allow you to connect to Zwift. Now, you need a computer or an iOS device. Of course, an internet connection. Most, most people already have an internet connection and a phone or a tablet. And he said, obviously, you need your bike and a turbo trainer. And in, in this, what I liked is he showed the Super Magneto Pro in the picture. He said, you can use any turbo trainer if you have a power meter on your bike. If you don't have a power meter, you will need a speed sensor on your bike. Not a big deal. Like I have a speed sensor that I put that I can put on the wheel of my bike that's on the trainer. I don't use it when I'm outside because I use GPS. It calculates your speed. But when I'm indoors riding, I put the speed sensor so, so the unit can know I'm going. If without the speed sensor, your head unit will turn off. It will think there's no activity. So that's, that's a given. So that's not necessarily an expense. Everybody kind of has that. Then he says, um, he said the lab, meaning the Zwift lab, is working very hard to support as many classic trainers as they can with what they call Z-Power. 
which is like a, a flavor of virtual power with acceleration. This is the Zwip ref tell, rep telling this guy. All you need is a speed sensor so they can calculate your power. Based on your speed and the trainer you have selected, Zwift will calculate your power output. Since it's a calculation, don't hang too much on it. All right. Zwift's, he says Zwift offers Z power for a whole bunch of different turbo trainers. Like for Cyclops, they have the mag, the magneto, the fluid, the jet fluid. So now, all of these little Z power thing, you pay for that. That's another expense. So you got to spend money to set up your trainer if you don't have a trainer that has power and all that stuff in there. So, you know, the, the expense, expense that you incur. Now, they said if you have an electronically controlled smart trainer like the Cyclops Hammer and all the stuff I'm talking about, which I will put the picture when I do the post-production so you can see what I'm talking about. The Cyclops Hammer pictured, you can take things to the next level. Zip, Zwift can simulate changing conditions like the terrain, wind, and drafting behind others. These smart trainers are more expensive than the classic type trainers. The hammer is like almost $2,000, $2,000 plus. And then you have tra trainers like the Elite Kubo Digital Smart B, which are about $750. So depending on the, the equipment you have, it will give you a particular kind of access to the features in Zwift. And they have other equipment that you can use. Like I said, uh, Shane Miller talks about Zwift on a budget to where you can use your PC and just a standard tra tra trainer to get set up. Now, he talked about getting it set up. Like he used the Cyclops Super Magneto Pro Trainer. He used the BE Pro Power Pedals, Power Meter Pedals. Because the Cyclops does not have power. So he used the power meter pedals that he has. He used a Garmin heart rate monitor and a Garmin USB and plus dongle. The reason why you need the USB and plus dongle is for Zwift to talk to your trainer, the software, basically. And he said, okay, now what? First, you need to go to Zwift's website and sign up. It's a paid for subscription service that is, is non-contract. So when you get to Zwift, it says everything you need to Zwift. So now they're using the name as a, you know, a verb or whatever. Select packages as low as $20 a month. So it has changed since he wrote that article. They have packages as low as $20 a month, zero down, 0% 0 financing, plus three months of Zwift on us. Then it says create an account. So they start at $20 a month. And you create an account and you're ready to go. Okay, let's go back to the article. So once you've joined, you need to download and install the Zwift software on your computer. It's simple. You just follow the instructions. You launch Zwift. You set up your profile. You pair. What they mean is you tell Zwift who you are. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If somebody goes in there and says, like I'm 86 kilo, kilograms. If I say I'm 67 kilograms, that's what Zwift will know. So that means I will appear to be climbing faster, riding faster than I am. Based on the power I'm going to be putting out when they calculate. So keep in mind that people can cheat. That's just it. I mean, I don't know why you'd bother doing that, but there, some people don't like to li deal with reality. All right. Once you launch Zwift, then you set up your profile, you pair your Ant Plus devices with your computer, Zwift will guide you through it and you're ready to go. That's why you need that dongle on non-smart trainers like the Super Magneto Pro. And they'll walk you through that. If you don't have a power meter and you're relying on your speed sensor and Zwift's virtual power to provide your on-screen performance, it's just as simple. They will walk you through that. So I'm going to skip to riding on Zwift. Once you're done, you're ready to roll. Most times when you ride the turbo, it's pretty dull, right? Right, out, right outside on the road and an hour sails by. That's my, my hook. I like to go outside. Ride on the turbo, on the other hand, and the time does something curious. An hour takes about a week. I mean, you know, he's being funny, but I know what he means. It does for me anyway, even though I always chuck intervals into the mix. That's what he's talking about. When I ride indoors, if I'm just spinning... 
I have the windows open, I run the, the telly and whatever, the time moves. I'm not bored because I have a focus. That's what he means. He said you throw in intervals, the time speeds. The people that are on our training program, they have work to do. If they're following their plan, they're not bored. But if you're just riding to be riding, yeah, you're going to be bored. You can be anyway. But people who are focused and got things, you, you just don't get bored. So if you're one of those that needs Zwift, I wanted to walk through this so you knew what it, what, what it is. If you need more details, go to Shane Miller. He, he talks about how to set it up and so forth. So now he says Zwift is like riding outside in that you get into it really quickly. The second another rider passes you on the screen or gets a bit of a gap, you want to jump on their wheel. Your power shoots up as you try to get yourself back. You're determined to drop other ri ri users on the climbs or at least not to get dropped and to bag yourself a good king of the mountains time on one of the segments. Then once you have your king of the mountain times, you want to beat it. Everyone says this, is when they, says this when they ride Zwift. They're drawn into riding with other people so that turbo training isn't just bearable, it's fun. Then he says, okay, it's not exactly like going out on a club ride or tearing it up on the road with a bunch of mates. You can wave at other riders, give an elbow flick when you want someone to come through and do the work. Send real-time encouragement with audio clips and communicate with the pack via group messages. You can also choose to see what's going on from different points of view. It's really immersive and a million miles from just sitting on the turbo and banging out the intervals on your own. Then he says there's plenty to explore in, in the Zwift universe, like workouts that offer lots of choices depending on how much time you have. They have FTP tests, customization, 12-week training plans. The pre-programmed workouts are designed to be social and inspiring. That's the emphasis, social and inspiring. So Zwift becomes a vital part of your training. There's also a companion app for iOS and Android called Zwift Mobile Link. This acts as an on-bike dashboard for Zwift session. also lets you see when your friends are online so you can join them on the virtual ride. I like what he said, and that's the reason I chose to do that. He says, the pre-programmed workout is designed to be social and inspiring. They're not as accurate as getting a workout built exactly for you. The reason being is that Zwift doesn't know you. Okay, so when you, when you do their FTP test, it's kind of different than an actual FTP test that you would do on the road or on the turbo trainer based on your vital statistics and so forth. So it's a little different. Now, it doesn't mean that Zwift is a dog, and uh, I'm not going to say who, but I think he knows who he is. Uh, after the last time I gave my input on the live session, I got a message from one of the subscribers on the channel saying that I should have just said Zwift was awesome. I didn't appreciate that. I'm not going to say something is awesome if I don't think it's awesome. Why? Why, why would I do that? We got enough untruthful stuff being said in the world, if you know what I mean. I don't, I don't believe in that. Because I don't care to use Zwift does not mean it's a bad thing. I always said, every time I would give, that's the reason I'm making this video. Every time I would give my input, I would say, if Zwift gets you on your bike, that's great. If that's what you need. Everybody's different. Okay? I have people that I mentioned it, I'm going to put it in here. I have one guy who uh, subscribes to the channel kept asking me when he was going to see me on Zwift. And what I told him was, you'll see me on Zwift when you pay for my Zwift membership and pay for my setup, then I'll use Zwift. Why should I give Zwift $20 a month? When I roll out, I don't pay anybody $20 a month to roll out to ride my bike. We have enough online dating and online this. You know, Zwift does not replace the social interaction of you going out and meeting real people. That will never be replaced by anything. That's not why Zwift was set up. Zwift was set up so that those of, of us or you that live in an environment where the road is not accessible because it's covered with snow, ice, and it's like below freezing. It's just so uncomfortably cold. So that, yeah, it just makes sense to do the trainer. I have a trainer to where if I simply could not get out during the day and it's dark or whatever and I want to do a short session, I can get on it. I don't need Zwift for that, but that's me. I have a focus. I know what I need to work on and I do it and I'm done. 
You know, it doesn't matter how many hours it takes. I don't need that stimulation that Zwift provides. But some other people do. If you're willing to pay $20 a month for that, that's great. That's your choice. So what I said was, I felt that Zwift was yet another unnecessary thing. It's not necessary to have Zwift. Just like when people ask, why don't you have carbon wheels? It's not necessary to ride carbon wheels. <laughs> you know, you just need wheels. Any wheels will do. And my, my reason for that is, we don't need all these expenses necessarily to ride the bike. But if you can afford it and you choose to, that's what it's about. Life is great. I think choices are great. So enjoy your Zwift if you have it. Don't take offense because I, myself, or somebody else doesn't think that is as great as you think it is. Enjoy it. There's a bunch of people using it. There's thousands of people on Zwift at the same time. So obviously there's a lot of people that think it's great. So you guys enjoy it. I think that I can do better with my $180, let's see, $20 a month is about $220 a year. I think I can do better things with my $220 a year, like getting a piece of kit that I like and going out and rolling on the roads that I already pay taxes for because I live in a region where the roads are not closed in the winter. So the, another comment I made was, okay, what happens when summer rolls around? Do you stay on Zwift? Do you, so are you going to ride virtually all year? No, I think people get out there. So what happens when you ride more outside? Do you get a discount? Can you suspend your thing? I think I, I've heard that it's a non-contract thing. So you probably can. And that's what I would think you would do. Use it for the winter and turn it off when you ride it on the road. Why keep giving them 20 bucks a month? You're not using it. You know, go outside and ride. Swift is not going to give you great bike handling. Swift is not going to give you the inner, the, the, what you need, the, the skills you develop from riding among other riders on the road. So you're going to need that at some point. It's not a replacement. It's a different avenue for ha helping you enjoy cycling. It's really like a game. It's an entertaining game. That's what it is. You can't take the numbers very seriously because you don't know what kind of setup those other people put in their profile so that they may not reflect real life situations. Okay, so that's why I wanted to make the video. Zwift is not a bad thing. It is a choice. If you want to spend money on that, that's fine. But if you're spending $20 a month on Zwift and with everything else you got going in your life and that causes you to not be able to even ride Zwift, then you need to relook at all your expenses, not just Zwift, and be a little more responsible. The reason we're able to ride is we keep things to a minimum to where we can get out there. Okay, we have time. And you're not going to have time if you have all this stuff. And what I said was Zwift was like another thing, another debt. It wasn't against Zwift. It's just, a, I don't know if it's a Western thing only to where everything now becomes a monthly expense as opposed to just spending the money. You guys see I wear Rafa. I don't send money to Rafa every month. When they have a deal or they have something I want, I'll buy it even at regular price. It's a one-time expense. I'm done. There is no continual expenditure there because I don't see that as a necessity. Now, it doesn't mean I don't have things that I paid for like when I was learning how to be a mechanic, I attended a class, I had to pay for that. I paid for it for a period of time, then I'm done. I have people that sign up for training and they pay for the expertise I give them because they get value out of it. They train for events or they train for their goals. So if you have all those things going on, do you really need Zwift? So I try to let people know you have to have balance. You can't have it all. And because uh, my logic is that you don't want to be overextended financially to the point where you have no time for yourself because you're working all the time to pay for those things. That's, that's my premise with all these things, you know, that, that, that are tied to expenses. So for me, Zwift does not work because I don't need that virtual environment. I have the real world I ride my bike in. So it just does not fit. I'm not alone in that. Okay. But, it is a service that is nice, that is out there for people who need it. So if you have Zwift, enjoy it. This video was about letting people know what my viewpoints come from as far as I see Zwift and other things that are tied to expenditures that I believe are not necessary to ride the bike. It is not. It's just 
a nice to have. Like disc brakes on a road bike, that's a nice to have. It's not necessary. Like carbon wheels on a road bike, it's a nice to have. It's not necessary, you know? Like a $13,000 bicycle is not required for you to ride a bike. You can get an inexpensive bike, however, eBay, wherever, and you, you're ready to enter the world of cycling. I, I profess that because I want more people to get into cycling and not be dealing with barriers to the entry into our beautiful sport. So let me wrap up this way. Be careful with the marketing out there. Uh, if you don't have eyes and someone selling glasses and you buy it, that's not a need. Okay. That means the marketing has you hooked. So don't fall for that. Caveat mTOR buyer beware. If you want to try Zwift, I saw on the site that they offer a trial. But the thing is to try it, you got to invest in all the setup stuff. Unless you already have a $2,000 plus dollar smart trainer that you can use. So if you don't have a power meter, I like that they give you the speed calculation option. You know, it gets you close enough, I guess, if you're into that. So, you know, that's another thing. Power meters, all this stuff, they're not necessary. Just focus on what you choose to have in your life and enjoy it. You don't need confirmation from me or anybody else. But my opinion is it's not necessary. Do not forget to go outside and ride with your mates, okay? That being said, get your K's in.